Hey everyone, I'm Zach, the founder of Inventables, and today I got with me Bart, our chief engineer. We're really excited that we're launching XCarve, uh, which is our new 3D carving machine. The, the goal for the project was we wanted it to be configurable, we wanted it to be backwards compatible with Shapeoko 2, and also uh, simplify the design. So um, today we're going to sort of talk through some of the new features and some of the design thinking um, behind it. So Bart, first off, uh, walk us through. So with those three features, what, what were some of the the, uh, the choices that were made here in terms of making it configurable? Um, well, um, we uh, set it up so it could be broken up into many different pieces and uh, you don't have to buy something you're not going to use. A lot of people didn't want to use the um, rotary tool. Yeah. So now um, you don't get um, a spindle by default. You get to choose the one you want. Yeah, so like on the website, basically, um, rather than picking a package, you can sort of configure the one you want. Exactly. And that was sort of the name, the thinking with the name XCarve as well. The X is sort of a variable that you get to define. In terms of um, being backwards compatible with a Shapeoko 2, what, what does that really mean? It basically means that you can take any single piece, um, like the uh, X carriage here, and put it on your older machine. Um, all the spacing's the same. Everything's been locally optimized, but um, in general, it's all compatible. Okay, cool. And then what about simpler? Simpler, um, basically, uh, we removed a lot of parts. Our goal was to um, uh, remove half the parts. Okay. So um, we're, we're pretty close to that. I think we have half the parts of the original machine. That's pretty cool. So the implication of that is quicker to assemble? Yes, much quicker to assemble and much easier to figure out. There's not a lot of parts you have to sort through to get something done. Cool. So uh, walk us through an overview of some of the highlights of the improvements that were made. Well, uh, one of the first improvements is changing the um, X carriage to an extrusion. This is a solid four millimeter wall thickness extrusion. Um, in the past, you had plates and multiple spacers and screws to hold those things together. It was a little bit difficult to hold yeah. while you put it together. Now, um, this one part um, probably eliminated about 20 parts. Okay. Um, and it's much, much stiffer. Yeah. So um, uh, that's an example of one of the things we did. Okay, so um, stiffness. So w with that being um, one piece eliminating about 25 parts, um, th this sort of connects to the, the carriage plates so t talk to me about where we've mounted the holes here. Well, since um, the side plates no longer have to do dual duty, yeah. um, we've optimized them for the y-axis. Okay. And primarily that means moving the maker slide back, um, which um, now puts the center of the spindle somewhere between the wheels, which makes it a lot less um, uh, likely to rock. It's sort of like riding on a boat. You know, if you don't want to get seasick, you ride near the middle. You don't ride near the ends where it's going to move much more. Okay. Um, so that also uh, freed up a lot of other things. So the motor placement was much easier to do. Um, we no longer have to mount NEMA 23s on standoffs. Um, we were able to move it up so we get much, much better belt wrap and um, we've got much better engagement of the pulley and the pulley fits on the shaft a lot better. And again, a lot less parts. So, so what, what, what's the implication of better belt wrap and uh, better engagement on the pulley? Um, it's less likely to slip. You want as much um, teeth engagement as you can get. Um, so um, uh, that's the, the optimization there. Okay. And then, so you talked about the spindle. Um, so we've got this extrusion here, but there's a new extrusion on the spindle as well. So t talk to me about that. Yeah, we have a lot of um, spindle options now, but the default one, instead of being the rotary tool, is now going to be a, um, a DC um, quiet cut spindle. Okay. And um, so we made an extrusion optimized for that. Um, it's just a single part. Again, uh, reduce the number of parts. You don't have to bolt together a bunch of things. It's uh, automatically aligned by default, very square and very, very strong. And cylindrical. Yes. So now it um, fits um, much better. It's, it's a much better clamping action and um, it holds it much stiffer. And so basically we've taken away the universal mount and then we've built uh, purpose-built mounts. Exactly. And it is 100% backward compatible. So you could put one of these um, on your older machine and then all the older options we had for all the other uh, spindles, um, the Bosch Colt, the DeWalt uh, 6600, um, the 48 volt um, multiple spindle sizes, um, all work here. And you can just use your old spindle if you want to. If you made a special custom mount, it'll still work for this. Cool. So the whole pattern is the same. Whole pattern's the same, size is the same, um, the uh, Delrin nut is the same. Very cool. 
So uh, one of the things here on the Z, it, it, it looks way more compact um, than it used to be. So talk to me about that. Like, what, what's going on here? Um, what we've done is we've flipped the motor over and hooked it up with a belt. Okay. Um, makes it much stiffer, less tall, less likely to wobble, um, and um, you know, just significantly stiffer all around. Um, and it's using a large single plate, mm -hmm. very easy to um, uh, install, not a lot of multiple plates and pinch points and wave washers, things like that. It's just um, you know, reducing the parts again by uh, um, quite a large amount. And then that makes it probably easier to assemble? Yes, it makes it easier to assemble. Um, the other one, um, it took a, a, a little uh, dexterity to get it together. Sure. Um, not a big challenge, but um, it's um, a lot quicker now. Okay, and then a big request that we've had um, over the last few years is the Acme upgrade, going from a thread rod to an Acme. And so now that's going to be one of the choices um, on the page. So talk to me about uh, an, using an Acme versus using a threaded rod. Well, there's uh, two choices now. There's all thread and Acme. And um, basically, Acme is a trapezoidal thread, whereas all thread is a triangular thread. So on a triangular thread, it looks like this. A Acme thread is like this. And you can see that the angle has changed, which means the force vector is now going um, in the direction you want to go. So you've got much less axial loading and friction and things like that. You're going to get about twice um, you know, the calculated efficiency in the push of the um, rod. It's also got a, um, a larger pitch, so it's going to run faster. And in general, um, it's a higher quality um, part, so it's going to be smoother and less friction. Sure. And now for the belting, uh, GT, GT2 belts? Yes. And uh, is it a similar thinking with the Acme and GT2 as compared to MXL? Uh, well, we used GT2 before on the other one. So it's a similar thing where it's like a zero backlash belt. But we've added some um, belt tensioners. So it's just a little easier to tension your belt. It's, um, you just uh, tighten it with a tool rather than having to do like a multi-handed operation before. And you can really dial in uh, a tighter belt. So how tight do you actually need the belts to be? Do you need to crank on them or just make them sort of snug? Uh, you need to make them sort of snug. I think the rule of thumb is about uh, six to eight pounds of pressure. Mm -hmm. Any more than that, you're going to put stress on your motor shaft. You might uh, induce early stretch in the belt, um, but about six or eight pounds. Okay, and so now uh, another cool thing is that I'm excited about, like I, I was running the machine yesterday, is the electronics. Um, so talk to us about the electronics that we got set up here. Um, uh, again, we're trying to simplify everything. Um, and we're going to a, a single power supply yep. um, with the old DC spindle and 48 volts or um, actually the rotary tool was running off AC voltage, which meant we had to um, uh, purchase multiple voltages for around the world, um, uh, which was a bit of a problem. Now we've gone to a single. This is a 24 volt spindle. Um, we can talk about that a little bit more later. Yep. Um, and so you have a single 24 volt supply. Now. Um, uh, some people are a little uncomfortable dealing with AC voltages, so we've created this nice um, uh, printed circuit board, which um, when you add a cap to the end, yep. um, you know, it's going to fully enclose it. Um, and uh, this gives you the ability to just plug a standard um, uh, plug in there. It has a switch on here, so easy to turn on and off. Mm -hmm. um, it's got power for your stepper, and we've also integrated um, DC motor speed control. So you get that as a bonus, not having to buy that separately. You can now um, fully control the speed straight from Gerbil um, and do speed control right out of G-code. And if that's a little much for you, there's just a switch for spindle on. You know, spindle on, spindle off. You can do PWM or just full speed. That's pretty cool. And so um, one of the things is we, we've upgraded and now we're using uh, Gerbil Point 9. Um, so talk to me about some of the, the benefits of upgrading from point 0.8 to point 0.9. Uh, the immediate benefit you'll see is uh, smoother operation. Um, the entire stepper engine's been rewritten. Um, but also one of the big things is you're not limited by your slowest axis. So it, uh, a machine like this is, is going to naturally have a relatively slow Z compared to everything else. Before that, that set the uh, speed um, of your whole machine. Now you can set the speed exactly um, what you want for each axis. So you can set maybe the X the fastest, Y a little slower, and, and Z even slower than that. Um, you've also got uh, PWM spindle control um, and a whole host of other things like limit switches, homing switches, uh, things. So limit switches, um, that was something that you used to 
Um, at least in our store, you had to cobble together, but now there's like a, a nice clean package and mounting holes. So talk to me about the limit switches. Well, the limit switches have dedicated mounting points that are exactly in the right spot. Um, no slots, anything like that. You put them right in there. And it's just a simple um, like set screw that sets the, the limit point. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very easy to wire. Um, we have a limit switch kit, which concludes everything. It includes the switch, all the wiring, and the hardware to mount it. And then so for someone who might be new to limit switches, like what's the benefit? They get the limit switch pack, and what can they do now? Well, um, you can consider them as homing switches. So you can tell the machine to go home, and now the machine knows where it is. And you can also have um, uh, soft limits, meaning you now know zero, and you know the maximum machine, and the software is going to warn you before it crashes into the far end. Um, so you, you now know zero, you know max, and the machine is going to um, stay within that range. That's pretty cool. Um, also, the, um, the, the, one, one of the pieces of feedback we've been getting on tapping the maker slide is that sometimes people um, break the tap in the maker slide. Um, we got an exciting announcement there. So w walk us through that. Well, we're using um, self-tapping screws now. Okay, so we've so, eliminated taps. Yeah, and these screws are extremely durable. You're not going to break the screw um, like you might have broken a tap. And um, so, um, and we it uses a, a high-strength Torx bolt. We give you the Torx wrench if you get the tool kit. Okay. Um, but it's a standard um, uh, T25 Torx. Um, and they just, they just go straight in. They, they tap their own hole. Um, a little lubricant makes it go easier, but you don't have to use a lubricant. Don't have to. That, that's going to be a popular feature for uh, folks. And so uh, talk about the toolkit a little bit. We, we've taken the toolkit into its own module. Yeah. So um, you no longer have to buy the toolkit. You can um, select it if you want. If you get it, it includes all the tools you need. Some people don't have um, things like the Torx wrench or a set of metric Allen wrenches, things like that. So it's a simple toolkit that contains every tool you need. But if you, have, if you have all the tools, then you can save some cash. Don't need to buy it. That's one of the goals with the X configuration yep. is um, just buy what you need. Don't buy things that you're not going to use. Cool. And then so um, there's some finishing touches here. Uh, we've done a little bit of cleanup on the wires. So the, um, the drag chain now has a mounting bracket. Um, what are some of the other f finishing touches that we um, have put on here? Um, well, the drag chain, as you mentioned, now um, is as dedicated mount. So if you buy drag chain, yep. you're not just going to get a meter long hunk of, of drag chain and have to figure it out yourself. There's dedicated mounting points for everything, okay. and it's built into the instruction set exactly when to put those things. And then um, brackets, things like that. So it's all ready to go. You, you would get everything you need, even the screws to mount it. Um, we've done a few other finishing touches, like uh, a nice cap here um, and a, a, an optional cap that you can get for the top here, um, and it just sort of cleans it up. Uh, you know, we wanted to make it simpler by re removing uh, the maximum number of parts we could, um, but just to make it look simpler, we made it all black so that, you know, it's it just not a lot of parts jumping out at you. Not a lot of visual noise. And so for these caps, um, we're going to have them available in the store, but you can also 3D print them? Yeah, we're going to produce um, the 3D printed file. Uh, this one's 3D printed. Um, it's not actually bolted on. I can show you what it looks like without it. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at that. And, um, but we're also offering a nice solid billet aluminum one if you want that one just for, uh, just for the machine so coolness. We, you, you were explaining to me earlier like the billet aluminum one. Um, what's the benefit to having a little bit of weight up here? Versus well, just a, a 3D printed cap. Yeah, any amount of weight centered over the thing adds a little bit of dampening. Um, and it is really not going to be detrimental in terms of acceleration because it's really only about a half a pound. But also just has a really solid look and cool feel that matches all the anodized aluminum other parts. But, you know, feel free to print your own. No problem. <laughs> so uh, you talked about acceleration. Yesterday I was in the shop and I was seeing the rapids this guy was doing. Talk to me about the rapids. Like what's going on there? Well, um, we have both NEMA 17 and NEMA 23 options. Yeah. Both are going to work fine. Yeah. If you want some killer rapids, you can go to the NEMA 23s. Now, um, they, they just mount right on here. All the holes are here. There's no mounting on um, extra standoffs, anything like that. If you get that kit, it includes all the hardware. Um, and the NEMA 23s are going to get you a little more acceleration. Um, depending on what electronics you use, and we've, we're going to have some pretty exciting announcements on hardware coming up, but this is fully compatible with um, the uh, G-Shield and previous stuff. Um, but we regularly run um, a thousand inches a minute rapids, um, and that's great with um, 
uh, Gerbil 0.9 because it supports those high rapids on specific axes. Cool. So um, one of the things about the XR, so it's configurable, it's also open source and it's, it's open source commercial so people can uh, build accessories for it. And part of being configurable is you can make it bigger. Um, so we have um, one, mil one um, meter size. The, there's two sizes of the spoil boards or the waste boards. Um, so talk to us about the expandability. Like if somebody wants to make it longer in the X or the Y, what, what are sort of the maxes that we're recommending? Uh, well, in the configurator, we're going to have two basic options. Yep. The um, 500 millimeter maker slide and the 1,000 millimeter maker slide. We're going to support those with everything you need. You know, your wiring kits, your drag chain, everything. And that makes it um, pretty big. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll see some pictures of that. But uh, after that, everything is compatible with getting larger. We're not going to sell these big waste boards. We can't ship a giant waste board. Yeah. But, um, you know, you can just expand the maker slide if you want, but there's two basic uh, kits right out of the box. So, for example, in the store we have like the 1800 millimeter maker slide. Um, in the Y direction, is that okay? Yeah, um, it, um, you, you can expand any axis to any size you want once. You're going to start getting um, stiffness issues um, with really long bits, but. In, in the uh, X. Yeah. Um, but we're also going to uh, start supporting with uh, supported um, points for the slide and stuff like that. But um, uh, right, so that's basically as you start to go to 1.8, you have a little support here. Yeah, yeah. So it's not just free hanging the whole way down. That's pretty cool. Um, cool. A anything else before we wrap up? Mm, not that I can think of. We also have some um, an accessory mount on the spindle which you can see right here. Yeah. Um, and basically this is, um, allows you to put a rod in there so you can have an adjustable dust shoe. Um, also these are tapped holes along here so if you have something to mount to the side. So we're going to come out with a bunch of um, options for that um, in the near future. Probably a dust shoe, maybe some lighting um, and some other ideas. Sounds all very cool. Well thanks very much for your time today Bart and if you have any questions then feel free to uh, email us at helpinventables.com or post in the comments.